Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the apparent brightness luminosity equation. Okay. Now, one thing that you need to remember, and you got this in your notes, and I tried to stress this in the crossword that you did earlier, is that luminosity is just power. Okay. If I get close to the star, if I get further from the star, that power doesn't matter. Right? How loud I'm speaking right now doesn't matter if I'm right up in your face or if I'm way in the back of the class. Well, actually, I'm not that far. I'm about six feet away right now. But the, the loudness of my voice doesn't matter. That's the luminosity. That's the power that I'm putting out. That doesn't change based off of your distance. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that as I got closer, maybe it sounded louder. It sounded louder because now I'm closer to the microphone. Now I'm farther away. That is the apparent loudness. How loud does it appear to be? All right. Now that does depend on where you are because where you are is going to be affected by that. All right. So that is apparent brightness. This now, <laughs> sorry, make the that idea of loudness and brightness. Okay. So it's a metaphor. Woo, metaphors, English class. Woo, we love English. No, we don't. Okay. Anyway, back on with light. Apparent brightness. Okay, is how bright it seems to be. All right. Now that's going to change based off of how far it is away. Now I'm going to make a quick aside, and then I'm going to go back to the calculations because I want to make sure that you understand why this is happening. Right. So when I have a star, which is illuminating, has a certain luminosity. Right. That star is letting off all sorts of light. Now when that lets off all sorts of light that light is going to leave the surface and it's going to spread out, right? It just keeps spreading out, spreading out, spreading out. Now, it doesn't make sense that the light should be as bright as it was when it spread out over a large area as when it was first created, right? When it's first created, the light is just around the surface of the sun. But as it gets farther away, that light is spreading out. Okay, so if we consider just the light being sent out right now, right in this instant, okay, and we look at it, say, a second later or an hour later, whatever time frame you want, as it gets farther away, recognize that the light is now this far away, right? Now, it's not this far as in a circle because the light's actually going out in three dimensions. So the light that was covering the surface here that covered that specific surface area now is covering a much larger surface area, right? And that's where this 4 pi d, d is the distance from the star to where you are. And the reason is because we're assuming, again, just like we did with gravity, just like we did with all those things before, we're assuming that it's a point particle, just like we did with the electromagnetic forces, right? We assume that it was a point particle, that everything was coming out of this point, which means that as it spreads out, it's now being spread out from the center to the point that I'm at now, which is a distance of d. Now what that d is, that d is the radius, the radius of the sphere over which the power is now spread out, right? Because the power was all concentrated around the star, and as it spreads out, it's spreading out in all directions. It's this sphere that it's spreading out in all directions. Now, light's traveling the same speed in all directions, which is why the radius is the same in all directions. I've just got this big old sphere all over the place that the light is now expanding to. All right, the farther it spreads out, the less light it appears to be. The apparent brightness seems to be less. All right, so um, that's going to be important here. Just remembering L is the amount of power that's actually being put out by the star. B is the apparent brightness. How bright does it appear to be? And D is the distance you are from the star because that is the radius of the sphere of light where the light has been spread out in all directions. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with respect to the calculations here is that sometimes it asks for a ratio. Okay. So it might ask for uh, a ratio. Uh, let, let, let's, let's create a problem. All right. So the problem may be something like this. Two stars appear to have 
the same brightness. But we know that star B is twice as far as star A. Which star is brighter? Uh, which star uh, produces more energy? And how much more? We don't got a lot to go off of there, right? Other than that we know it's twice as far away. Now, the first part of this question should be fairly easy to determine, right? The first part of the question, which star produces more energy? Star B or star A? Well, if they, were the, if they appear to be the same brightness and they were the same distance, then they'd ha have to be letting out the same power, right? If star B is further away from you, why would it look as bright as star A? It should look dimmer, right? If B is farther away, says it's twice as far, my fist now looks smaller, right? So it should be less bright. Why would it be brighter? Well, because it's putting out more energy, right? If it's putting out more energy, then as it goes over that distance and dims, it will dim to the same brightness as the closer one, right? So we know right away that star B must produce more energy. Now the next question is how much more? Okay, so we're going to use the formula to determine this. And you may remember at the very beginning of year one, we talked about this idea of variable manipulation, and I want to make sure that you know how to use that on this question because this is a very common type of question in astrophysics. All right? So we are going to be we're going to be looking at which one produces more energy. Now, of course, in order to produce more energy, because they're both producing energy continuously, then that means whichever one produces more power is also going to be the one that produces more energy. All right. So we're going to start with that. All right. We want to find the energy which is going to be related to the power. All right. So knowing that it's related to the power, let's use our equation here, we're going to solve for power, get power by itself. Okay, so I'm going to take this 4 pi v squared, and I'm going to move it to the other side of the equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by that. So what I'm going to have is L equals the apparent brightness times 4 pi v squared. All right, now that I have that, now I'm going to make a comparison. And you learned back in like fifth or sixth grade how to make a comparison between two values using a ratio. All right. Now, we, when we don't actually have numbers to work with, when we won't be able to subtract, a ratio is the best way to compare two different numbers. Okay. So what we have is we have the luminosity. We want to know which one produces more energy and how much more. So I'm going to put the one with more energy on the top. Okay. So that's the luminosity of B. And I'm going to put the luminosity of A on the bottom. And this will tell me if B has twice as much luminosity as A, then whatever that number is, this divided by that will be 2. And that means that this has twice as much energy. If this has a quarter as much energy, then when I do this divided by this, I'll get a quarter. And that will always show me, relative to the other, how much energy does it have. All right? So this is now going to be this right here. Okay, so I'm going to put in the apparent brightness of B times 4 times pi times D, right? Now D for B is twice as far as A. So I'm actually going to put in here 2D. Now that does have to be squared. Now this is all over the apparent brightness of A. And then again, 4 pi. Since I made this 2d, that means that a has to be a distance of d away. Now, I should be able to just go through that and solve, right? 
So we're going to go through and we say, well, the apparent brightness is the same because it says they appear to have the same brightness. So those two are the same. Notice that the four is on top, four is on top. There's a pi on top, pi on bottom, right? And so what I'm left is 2d squared over d squared, all right? Now, this, because the squared is on the outside, the whole distance has to be squared. This turns into 2 squared, which is 4, and d squared. At this point, I've got on the bottom d squared, the two d squareds are going to turn are going to cancel out, and what I'm left with is 4. So what that means is that star B is four times more luminous than star A. All right? You're going to get a lot of practice with this type of question as you go through your homework tonight. All right?